right, welcome to another Brainjo Bite. So uh, as promised from the last episode, I am going to review uh, the process, the step and step process that uh, I recommend whenever you are learning uh, a new tune or song from tab um, or written notation in general. So in the last episode, I discussed what to do when you have trouble remembering songs that you've learned or that, are, that you're trying to learn. And one of the primary reasons why this happens, as I mentioned then, is from using a learning process that makes it next to near impossible to memorize songs. So written notation, including uh, tablature, can be a very useful tool. Um, and when it's used wisely, it can allow you to um, start making great sounding music faster and can really accelerate your progress. But uh, and the real thing here that we're trying to avoid when using it is developing networks in the brain for playing, playing music or playing the banjo that have the written notation as a part of them, what I referred to in that episode as uh, vision to motor neural networks. These are the networks you want to build if you want to learn to read music by rote, like a musician who's playing classical music, um, which is really just a subset of the broad world of music. And they're not at all the types of networks that you want to build um, if you're learning to play the banjo. Here, what we're trying to create through practice are sound to motor networks, um, ones that can take an imagined sound in the mind, translate into the movements of the hand so that sound comes out of your instrument. And you want those networks to operate uh, independently of written notation. So you don't want notation to be baked into them in any way. So then the question is, how can you get the benefits of written notation like I talked about or tablature without baking it into those networks and undermining your musical pro progress, making it very hard to do things like play songs for memory or jam with other musicians and so on. One of the features of the Breakthrough Banjo course for Clawhammer and fingerstyle banjo is the vault um, which is a large collection of tabs and tutorials for tunes and songs. Uh, so now I'm going to show you a video from the Clawhammer Vault that walks through the process that I recommend whenever you're using tab in the learning process. All right, so now I'm going to show you how the Vault is now designed to mirror the recommended process, the seven-step tune learning process uh, for learning from tab. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through that process. So we're going to first head over to the Tune Vault. And then let's go ahead and we'll click on uh, one of the tunes from the um, Easy But Awesome collection. Uh, this, these, are in, these are the ones in double C and double D. So we'll click on Cumberland Gap. And we'll do these from this section since this is probably when you're learning these level two um, arrangements, this is probably the time when you're going to be more reliant on tab and less confident in your ears. And um, as you continue to develop your ear through the course, um, you'll start relying on your ears more and more. And um, this that's really one of the key concepts here, no matter where you're at, is that you want to be trying to move the song from visual space into audio space as soon as you can. All right, so step one in the process, remember, is to know the melody and can't emphasize this one enough. So that means the, the notes of the song, but also the parts and the structure and so that you can hum it back in your mind. And so you'll find at the top of every page of the vault a demonstration of the tune or the song. So again, this one is for Cumberland Gap. So listen as many times as it takes to get the tune in your mind. Um, also, if you're not already subscribed to the Brain Joe Jam podcast, um, I really recommend doing so. All of the tunes that are played on that podcast are in the vault, so it's a really good way to familiarize yourself with the music. All you'll need is your phone, and you can stream those. Um, incidentally, if you find it hard to remember tunes, you might want to start with the song vault, and I'll, I'll show that real quick in a minute. Okay, so uh, now we go down to the tab. So here's the tab, and step two uh, in the learning process is to learn it in chunks. And the general idea is to take a section, uh, to learn it, 
and then to play it back from memory. And so really you wanna find the largest section that you can remember. And if that's only one measure, that's fine. That's where you should start. So let's say that I've learned the first two measures of Cumberland Gap and I've used the tab to kind of help uh, learn these fingerings. So I've got... Okay, I think I've got that down. So I'm gonna now, I'm gonna take the tab away and I'm gonna try to play that along with the Beats for Banjo track. So the third uh, step in the process is play your chunk, whatever chunk you can remember, along with an external timekeeping device. So we'll start to play the tracks. And I'm gonna loop through those two, those two measures. And I'm gonna do that till I feel like I've got it down. Um, by the way, if you do need to go slower, you can adjust the play playback speed further by clicking on the gear icon and then going down to half or even quarter speed. And again, remember, you can toggle through this playlist for all the different beats per minutes, all the way from 70 to 120, but with the ability to adjust playback speeds, you've got an even uh, greater range. All right, so once I have that piece of the tune down, my next step is to uh, learn the next piece, right? So I'm gonna learn the next two measures. I play that along with it, and then I'm gonna loop it, and then I'm gonna try to play both of those together uh, with the backup track. See if I can remember all four measures from memory, not looking at any tab. And that's the process you keep repeating. Again, the general principle here, take a section, learn it, then play it back from memory. If you can't, then take a smaller section, right? And then pl play it back along with some um, time timekeeping device, like Beats for Banjo, and you continue this process of learning sections and then adding them to your previous section, playing along with the backup until you're able to play the whole thing. So with each step, you're getting your eyes off of the tab and getting the tune into your mind as quickly as, as possible. And you're always using some external timekeeping device to practice with, um, which is absolutely essential for developing good rhythm and timing. If you don't do this from the start, you will have to go back and do it and it will take you longer the second time around. Now, in all likelihood, if you're still in the beginning phases, this will take multiple practice sessions to go through this process for a tune. But I'd brought, what I'd strongly encourage you to do is visualize playing whatever part you learned that day later on in the day um, when you're away from your banjo. This is a really helpful uh, way to develop those um, sound to motor connections in the brain that I talked about before that are so important. And again, this will feel hard at first, but it will get easier and easier. And ultimately, you want to get to where you can play, again, the entire tune from memory along with the backing track. And then, speaking of visualization, we get to the next three kind of bonus steps in the process. So these are things that aren't absolutely necessary, but I would strongly recommend doing. So step five is, one, step five is once you can play through the whole song, record yourself uh, playing it. And then what you do is you listen back to your recording, which is step six, and visualize yourself as you are playing along. One of the great things about listening to something that you've recorded is it's real, It's almost impossible not to kind of imagine yourself playing and visualize your, yourself playing as you're, as you're hearing it because you were the one that made the recording in the first place. So again, a really nice and easy way to work on visualization. And then the next step is to try to visualize playing the entire tune from memory without um, listening to the recording. So again, if you're able to do that, if you can visualize the entire tune from memory and know the, the movements of your hands that you're making uh, when doing so, then you're building exactly the kind of neural networks that you want to be building. Because again, when you're doing, when you're visualizing like that, uh, tab is not part of that process. And overall, I'd encourage you to visualize anytime you get a chance. 
Um, and if you're consistent with this and you stick to a really good process and continue training your ear, then ultimately you will reach the point where you can learn uh, new tunes really fast. And now real quick, I'm going to go back out to the song vault. All right, so again, the song vault is laid out exactly the same. Uh, but as I mentioned, it may be easier for you to remember songs rather than tunes. So if you find yourself um, struggling to remember tunes, then you, uh, I I'd recommend uh, starting off with the song vault. And that's regardless of whether or not you want to sing and play with the banjo, because every single uh, one of the song tabs contains a vocal backup and an instrumental break. Um, so... Again, you'll see these labeled in the tabs. Here's the vocal backup. And the vocal backup is essentially a Brainjo level two solo. Um, that's because these simple, more simplified versions sound uh, better for back, backup. So the vocal backups for any of these songs would also be a great, great uh, to learn early on using this exact same process and with the added advantage of being easier to remember. So again, the song vault is laid out exactly the same way. Also, um, you'll note here that um, these classic tunes also have a jam track that you can play along with um, listing the chord progression. So that's something that you can do after you've learned the entire tune is then practice playing along with uh, a backing um, music track, in this case uh, a backup uh, ukulele rhythm track that will play through the entire song. The difference between this and the beats for banjo is that if you get if you miss a part on uh, when you're playing here, then you have to find where you're at because the chord progression is going to be the, going through every time uh, the same way. Whereas if you're playing with your timekeeping device, um, then you can sort of re redo the same parts over and over again. The the backing isn't specific to any particular song, so that's the advantage of using that first and then moving to a jam track once you've really learned the tune. Okay, so to summarize the process for learning any tune from tab, number one, know the melody. So being able to hum or sing it before you get started. Um, and again, if you find that a challenging thing to do, then that's just a signal that you need to work specifically on your musical memory. Remember in the last Brain Joe Bite, I talked about um, musical memory as being a common hidden barrier to progress. So finding that you struggle with it is a great is great feedback because then it won't be a hidden barrier for you and you can know to work on it. Second piece, second uh, step, learn in chunks. So learn a chunk of a uh, piece of the tune, then play it back from memory. Um, don't learn any chunks larger than what you can remember. Number three, practice it with a timekeeping device like the Beats for Banjo tracks. Number four, learn the next chunk and attach it to your last one, uh, and then play that from memory. And then bonus steps five, six, and seven, record yourself playing it. List step six, listen back to it while you're visualizing. And then step seven, visualize playing the whole thing from memory. Again, the key here is getting your eyes off of the tab early in the process and playing based on what you hear uh, in your mind, not what you see on the page. If you do this right off the bat, you're going to be training and building your ear and beginning to construct those crucial sound to motor neural networks that will make it so the sky is the limit uh, in your future, future musical journey. Thank you for watching this episode of Brain Joe Bites. To catch future episodes, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you haven't done so already. You can also hear these episodes on the Brain Joe Jam podcast, and you'll find a link to that in the video description. Also, if you are ready to get started learning the banjo, then head over to brainjo.academy. There you will find courses based on the Brain Joe method, the first neuroscience-based system of instruction designed specifically for grown-up brains with no prior musical experience required. Oh,